Welcome back to the Trials and Tribulations podcast with Larry and Justin. Today, we're going to talk about partnerships, and it's applicable to both, you know, a lawyer's partnership, but the partnerships that you have throughout your life, throughout business. And, you know, a lot of people, I think, rush to form partnerships because they think it's going to, you know, benefit them financially or, or in, their, in their personal lives. And as we have found, I think, over the last probably five or six years in particular, but maybe even longer since we've been working together, there are certainly partnerships that you should take a second look at and maybe not rush into. And then there's the ones that you know right away are gonna click. But it isn't an easy process, and I think that most lawyers in particular understand that not all partnerships work out because you constantly see law firms splitting up, yeah. changing, you know, guys going their separate ways. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, some of our partnerships, both in the finance world, the insurance world, the legal world, and us as partners, you know? Absolutely. And there's And, and thinking about this, you know, before we started um, filming today, I was, I was also thinking about what is a partnership? There's so many different kinds of partnerships, and that term is... It's thrown around. I mean, legally it has one meaning. Colloquially it can have other meanings and it can have meanings in your personal life and your business life. So I think it's, when we were discussing this morning, what are we gonna talk about? And you proposed this idea that was brilliant and it really, it, it provokes so many thoughts. But you know what just occurred to me and I wanna touch back on this after we go through the different elements of partnership is comparing it with the, what's the polar opposite of a partnership and it's being alone. And I thought that's a very interesting um, thing to talk about as well. And especially in the last 10 years, I'd say 20 years, this, um, this notion of like the mythical founder or the, the mythical entrepreneur who does everything by, by, by his self, like by, Elon Musk. by herself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, the list goes on and the effect that that can have on people when they buy into this myth that one person can accomplish everything alone. And so I think that it's a very interesting thing to contrast partnership with this mythology that, that there can be one genius that can do everything <laughs> and, and the, the detrimental effects that we've seen on some people who have worked with us who, who bought into that mythology, who have been fed that mythology. And I think that that's an issue that could be its own topic. No, you're right. And I think for us, what's interesting is that, you know, I always tell people that a lot of times, most times actually, partnerships form because of a pre-existing family relationship or friendship. And those things can oftentimes go terribly, terribly wrong. And, yeah. You know, families can get broken down as a result of a bad, badly formed business partnership. Marriages can fail. Friendships can be badly impacted. Because the moment that you put business and money and that type of trust into a pre-existing relationship that that did not exist, it can get very muddy. And for you and I, what's, what's really interesting, I think that a lot of people probably don't know, we've been working together, I would say since 2010, is probably the time when we first yeah. started actually working yeah. together. So it's crazy to think that it's been 13 years. It's nuts. But prior to working together, we really didn't know each other. We, well. we not really, we didn't know one another. Yeah, we were not friends before. We didn't meet like in college and decide, oh, we're gonna work together. We're not brothers. So we found this very, I think, unique an unusual bond through just an idea, which originally was level insurance, that has morphed into so many different things. But the real basis that I always tell people is, A, we know what each of us is good at and what each of us is not good at, and we sort of accept that without yeah. expecting the other to do what we do and vice no, versa. No, we, em we embrace that. And, and more importantly is that there is this incredible trust, which I think, it, it sounds, I guess, sort of, you know, What's the word I'm looking for? Polyannic, uh, you know, rosy glasses, whatever. I don't know what the words are, but it's it really does exist between the two of us, and that is that we only have written documents working together because our other partners require us to do so, but it isn't needed, and I think well, that's a very unique situation, and we've seen a lot of bad partnerships absolutely. throughout our lives. So let, let's talk about trust, because it, it, it begins with trust, and it ends with trust. Uh, the rest is just luxuries, right? But we can go down, you know, speaking of, of strengths and weaknesses, you're great at, at talking off the, you know, off the cuff, and I have to make notes. <laughs> but, but, but you know that about me, so give me a little time to make some notes and gather my thoughts. Come on. But 
Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but trust, when sometimes people will ask me, be like, well, you know, do you trust your partner? And I say, listen, I can, I can talk to you about trust and handshakes and all that stuff, but he has access to my bank account and I have access to his. So I can't, I don't know, I don't know any more profound way to describe a level of trust at a, in a way that people understand by saying, listen, yeah, we have each other's bank accounts linked. Yeah. But we, we have for years. But what we've seen throughout the course, so we've made so many different partnerships between us and others throughout the last 13 yeah. years. And some have been very beneficial and, and some have been really well, bad. We've had great partnerships. We've had terrible partnerships and we've had near misses. And yeah. I think those are all very valuable to explore. And I think what's, what happens throughout the course of, of our career is, and we've gotten better at this. We weren't great at it at the beginning because I think the bigger mistakes are almost mistakes that we made were when we were first starting level insurance. Yeah. We were looking for either an insurance carrier or another insurance partner to help us get that product to the next level because we didn't really know enough about insurance to be dangerous. We just knew how to develop an idea. Or business generally. Because they don't teach that in, in law school. And we almost got involved with several different people Oof. that if we would have done that, we wouldn't be sitting here today. But no. we were this close until we started to see that there were some issues that maybe were not reconcilable between the two of us. And then we got out. And one of the most important ones that we've seen people try to do, and they've done it very ineffectively, is to try and play us against one another. And I think a lot of times in business, if someone's trying to gain advantage, they look at two people who are working together and they try to figure out how they can build a wedge or a gap between them to find their oh, way in. How many times have people tried to do that? Yeah, the bad it, actors. Right. <clears throat> That's usually their tell. When they start saying things to you that say, well, well, he said that, and they say the, the, the opposite to me, well, he said this or he was doing that, and we know it's BS. Right. That's, that's like right away we know, right, this is never going to work. But, it's, it gets, but when you're... It's a common tactic, though. I think especially, you know, when you bring this back to lawyers and law firms, a lot of times lawyers are nervous about going off and starting their own firm by themselves. I did that back in 2009, and it was intimidating and nerve-wracking. I mean, I had to send a fax when fax machines were still a thing and had to figure out how to send my own mail. I had nobody really to help me, and that's a daunting thing to try to figure out when you're also trying to earn money. So a lot of times, lawyers look at each other, they say, oh... We both practice in the same area. We're both pretty good at it. Let's do this together. And that really isn't enough. And you really have to start to think about the synergies that you have between two people. Just because you have a similar interest in business doesn't always mean that you're going to work well together. In fact, oftentimes, quite the opposite. You're going to work poorly together. Yeah. And that will, cr that will take a friendship and it will destroy it. Well, I think growing up in law firms and, and being in the legal industry you see so many mismatches. And I think we know just lawyers generally, they're always breaking apart and moving and, and you just, it's just a very common thing in the le legal industry. I can't think for, I can't speak for other industries, but we have intimate knowledge of, of the practice of law and you see it happening all the time. And it's precisely because, as you said, I don't think there's a, a lot of thought going into what makes a successful partnership. Yeah. Because a lot of times, and we hear this from lawyers who call us and say, well, you have an insurance policy for X firm and I'm breaking off to start my own. Can we change the policy? Constantly. And, and what happens oftentimes is one partner, so to speak, feels like they're not getting treated fairly or they're doing most of the work or they're bringing in most of the business and the others are sort of benefiting from them and they want to break apart because the instant need to be producing is not there. But yeah. In the practice of law, as in a lot of businesses, different people provide different value at different times and making a snap decision to break or to form is oftentimes going to be well, the death knell of these types of partnerships. You're right. But back up to something. You said a lot of times one person will feel that they're carrying too much weight or vice versa. Or when It's something that you and I talk about a lot and it's accountability. And I think up there with trust, or maybe it's part of trust, is accountability to one another. And, and you and I have discussed this at length. And a lot of times, under the most extreme circumstances, the only thing that keeps me going and the only thing that keeps you going is just feeling accountable to one another. It's like, I can't, I, I feel so discouraged by this situation or that situation. I mean, we can go, we have a laundry list of things that have discouraged us deeply. And one of the primary things driving me to not get discouraged by it, 
to not get down and say, I can't, I, I, I can't be weak for Justin. He, I owe this to him. Like, I'm not going to let this get me down. It's bothering me more than it's bothering him, but I owe it to him to, to get through this. And I think that dynamic has been very powerful. And a lot of times the, the real test of any type of partnership, whether it's a law firm or the ones that we have with banks or the ones that we have with insurance companies, is not when things are great. Because when things are going well, everybody's happy, people are making money, yeah. you know, great, everyone's celebrating. When things are tough is when you really see who it is that you're working with. And we've had some good fortune, you know, throughout the course, especially here with Idea Financial, is we've had really good banking partners. You know, when you think about, about what happened during COVID, many lenders were just cut off by their banks. You know, their banks didn't think about the fact that during the last three, four years, they were all doing very well together. The moment things got even slightly difficult, they wanted to end that relationship or stop providing their 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 lenders what they were previously giving them. We, on the other hand, we had a great relationship with Cross River Bank at that time. They never told us that we had to stop lending. Yeah. In fact, they supported us, which was the sign that they were a good partner because they they showed up when it was difficult. Well, let's break it down. That's what's what's interesting about this. We had a re, you know our company had a relationship with that bank, right? But we had partnerships with the the people who we worked with, and it's a kind of partnership, right? So um, you have to break it down, and you say, all right, a partnership can be a, a legal uh, relationship or you have a shared financial interest, a shared ownership in, a, in an asset. Those are different kinds of, of, of partnerships that you can have a, a partnership where it's just you work together. Like a transactional a transa Even a vendor or, um, you know, there's so many different kinds of relationships that they transcend when they become partnerships. And I think that's what's helped us in that particular situation in many is that we, we we, we don't just settle for a relationship with another business or a relationship with, with a counterparty. We almost demand and seek out, and we have the expectation that we have to have a partnership with the people who are there because we've learned that, as you said, when things get difficult, and things constantly seem difficult, right. the, more complex, uh, the more complex the enterprise, the, the more days... You're gonna you're gonna think to yourself, man, this is a difficult day. Yeah, like we've had when we first started with Level, we had to go insurance company by insurance company to try to find the right partner. And you know, we were working with one that we did not end up doing business with because they were not interested in, in doing business with us, despite mm -hmm. a lengthy process. And we felt, but we felt that we had a, a true friendship with the people that we were working there with. And so, even years after they turned us down, we've gone back. We we've, we've sought guidance and assistance from the principals over there. So just because things didn't work out does not mean that the relationship and that partnership was broken. However, we've also had partnerships with folks in the insurance industry where we've always delivered everything that was expected of us. But when things got difficult, the moment things got hard, they wanted to turn their back and they showed their true colors. So you really see who is and is not truly a partner of your business or of you personally when they have to get into a battle and, yeah. you, and you, either they're there with you or they run away under stress with their tail between their legs because they can't handle the stress because the stress is what things break under stress unless you have those elements of trust accountability and, and i have a list of things to discuss the you know different attributes well let's hear of it. partnership all right let's so see. you got your notes i don't have any all right well that's <laughs> that that brings let's go right into strengths and weaknesses Okay. And, and I think that relates to what I was saying before. You have this, this mythical figure of the one person who can do it all. That's, that's BS. That's baloney. I, I think one of the elements of, of a strong partnership is, is a complementary relationship where one partner has a certain strength, the other partner has another strength. And you see that the cumulative effect is that, is, is that the, the team is greater than one. And I think that that's a very important thing to analyze. And I know there's, I've, you know, I firmly believe that everything we're doing here today, I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't, I couldn't have done it without you, and I still can't, and I don't want to, because there's certain things that I know Justin does those things better than me. Yeah, and the same and thing I'm in reverse. And I'm very lucky that I, I feel fortunate. I'm like, all right, this is, this is a Justin thing to do. 
And and it's well, like be an, an asshole. No, <laughs> no, you know, what I mean. you know, there's there's so many. It's gotten to the point, and we've been like this for years now, where it, it can be when we're giving a presentation, or we're when we're in court, or when we're in a boardroom. When a question gets asked, we know intuitively who's going to be the one to answer it. We don't even look at one another. I know. All right, Justin's going to answer that question. The next question, I'll say, all right, that one's mine, and he knows that it's mine. We don't even yeah. look at one another. Well, it also it comes down to. What, knowing each other's personality. And when you're looking at, you know, whether it's a law firm or other type of business partnership, understanding, like you said, strengths and weaknesses. And at least the way that I see it is I'm emotional. Very, and I don't think that you're unemotional. I just think that you're better at masking the emotions. I'm just out there and I, it's very hard for me to hide my emotions. So when it comes to a, a heated negotiation or a difficult conversation, my one of my weaknesses is I can say something that might offend the person that we're working with and that could scare them away. So years ago, we started this process, which I would suggest to any partners that are working together to make sure that they're accountable and smart, is if something were to bother me and I was gonna send somebody an email, I would send an email and I might later regret the email that I had sent because it was too quick in my head and it was too emotional. And so I stopped doing that probably like four or five years ago. And instead I send that email to you, right? And then you either edit it or tell me you nuts. <laughs> usually, don't it's send it. <laughs> usually it's archived. <laughs> right, <laughs> don't send it at all. But, or we decide, okay, like let's rework this and you go ahead and send it instead of me because from your voice, it'll be more diplomatic yeah, if it comes to Or me. it can be a combination of, of all those things. But sometimes it's just um, just getting it out. But how many draft emails do you think that I've sent you over the course of Thousands. the last five years? <laughs> no, but I, I, but I do the same to you. Yeah, no, but mine is for, 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 for minus to check my head. Yours is just to make sure that like the thoughts are there. Okay, but that's but that's that's a healthy thing, and that brings me to my next one of the next things I wanted to to discuss is support, right? And that's that's part of it. I think a successful partnership, you have to support one another because no one's Superman, and Everybody has down days. Everybody has. Sometimes you have a down week, and, and that's that's normal. It's a hum, It's the human condition. So a strong partnership must entail strong support. Uh, you know, if I, I might feel down. Sometimes things affect me differently than you. I might feel disappointments about things more than you. Vice versa. Something might bother you that doesn't bother me. There's so many variables, but. Part of a strong partnership is is being there to support the other partner, and that that go, that extends outside of business. That that it, that that begins to involve personal things as well. But if your partner, for lack of better words, is an asshole and is self centered and doesn't support you, that partnership is not going to last very long. No, it's not, and it's also again, if I'm if I'm ever to give advice to like a young lawyer or a young business person who's thinking about getting go getting into business with somebody. Obviously, we talked about the basics, which are obvious, like things like trust and accountability. But the other thing is when you start to build a larger infrastructure like we have here, I mean, I think that idea slash level has about 55 employees or so. There will be days where you and I will not agree on things. But it's very rare, if ever, that the people that work with us will know that that disagreement has occurred. Because one of the most important things when you're working with somebody to try to run an organization is to have a united front. Even if there's an issue that you internally don't necessarily see eye to eye, the people that you are working with you are looking for you to be a leader. They're looking for you to be um, you know, sort of that pillar that they need to be supportive for the whole company. And if the leaders are openly disagreeing, the business itself will have no chance to succeed. I don't really agree with that. No? No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were being serious. You walked, like, well, right shit, into, I... you walked right into that. <laughs> well, it, I, absolutely. That's so, I don't think it's, I don't think anybody has ever seen us disagree about anything. First of all, before we even get into that, I, I can't, I think we can kind of one hand the amount of times we've disagreed on things hmm. in 13 plus years. But it does happen. Of course, it's normal. We, we, sometimes you can have a difference of opinion, but we've never displayed it publicly. If we, if there's something important enough that we don't immediately agree upon we can sense it but neither of us say anything and we'll go resolve it behind closed doors and that is very important and i i would extend that to anybody within the company who has a position of leadership so with us with our executive team 
we we talk daily. We talk, and there, and though the more people that are involved in any discussion or decision, the more chance there's going to be dissent. The more chance there's going to be disagreement. Of course, it's math, right? So the, yeah, you just have more personalities. You have more opinions, and but the goal is always to end that debate or that conversation with a a decision. And the people who don't agree with the decision have got to at least present to the rest of the company that that decision is made by all. Well, I, and I think that's right. very, very important. I think a big, a big takeaway from that is, is that if there's an unstable partnership or not a good partnership, it has trickle down effects amongst the entire organization, and and you can like you can see that in any kind of business. If 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 the partners don't have a good partnership then I don't think there's a chance of success for anything else because it all it has a, a, a destabilizing effect. It, it affects morale, and, and it makes people feel insecure. So, yeah, that is an important element of partnership, that if the partnership's weak to begin with, the prospects for, for growth and, and success are, are highly diminished. Yeah, because you just and, – and again, it's, it doesn't just deal with, with you and me. The way the company here at least is now, there's so many different people in positions of leadership that – either run a team or run a department. And it's so important that the people that work, I don't, I don't like to say work for them, work with them, believe that whatever their stated goal is is something that they support, that they can work to to ultimately achieve. And if people start to see that there's a lot of dissent in the ranks or that the people that are, are overseeing their work are not agreeing, A, it makes them feel insecure, but also it could also lead to people trying to take advantage and it could destabilize the entire organization. It, yeah. And I think especially when you're talking about law firms, because in law firms, there's it's the focus is on cases, the focus is on results, but it's also important that those partners are working together to achieve a goal throughout the entire business, whether it's business development, you know, use of funds, making sure that they're doing, they're, they're advertising or they're, they're litigating their cases and they're each contributing enough to the team. If there's any dissent amongst the, the partners at the top, they, they can never let others know about that because it'll just make everyone feel like it's a destabilized organization. Yeah, I, I think that's something where our, our senior managers, we've and the leaders in this company now, we've trained them. And we've that's something that we always convey to them. It's like, listen, in, in a public forum, if there's some disagreement, you, you have to learn how to keep it separate. And resolve it, but not not publicly because it, it affects people. And it, it can it, even if the partnership is strong amongst those two people, it can give the appearance that it's not. And you know, we've had some situations, you know, somewhat recently where partners of ours have disappointed us. People that we trust, people that we've been working with for a long time, have suddenly, when things got a little hot or a little difficult, have said, "Oh, I'm 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 out. I can't, yeah. I can't deal with this anymore." And to me, there's nothing more disappointing or disingenuous than when you've delivered for the people that you've been working with for so long, for those people to not be able to take just a little bit of heat if things get out of whack. It is. You know, that's that's a tough thing to swallow because at least for you and me, I know that we put 110% in every day to make sure that the people that we work with, whether it's inside the company or outside, get everything that we can deliver for them. And when we don't, when you don't get that same thing in return, just because there's a little bit of, you know, things he, aren't things aren't exactly the way they're supposed yeah. to go. Nothing could be more disappointing to me. It is. It is disappointing. Then it, 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 you always, you know, the same re, the same way we're thinking about what is a strong partnership and defining it. When 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 things go go south, they're going not set, but go a little sideways. You're like, well, I'm disappointed that this these people didn't pull through. It makes you think. All right, should we have seen things differently? Or if anything, all right, well, here's something that we should be careful um, the next time around. That's the key. That's the key is that you, it's always a learning experience. It is. And, and every time something goes wrong with either, you know, whether it's a relationship that you have with another business where the companies are partners or it's an internal, you know, co- partnership between you and another person, when things go wrong, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be soured on the entire idea. But there's always something to learn from that. And if you look back, and you and I, if we look back, there are certain things that I think we've held on to probably longer than we should have. It, we should have seen it coming that it wasn't going to work out yeah. and sort of cut bait sooner. But again, it's always it's always a learning experience. It, it is. And if you go back 13 years, we didn't know any of this. And 
I think every time, every type of partnership. There's so many. I don't. We don't have enough time to go through all the all the different partnerships and different degrees of partnership levels and different kinds. But every partnership includes power dynamics, and I think that that's a, that's something that we've learned um, throughout these years. Different relationships, different partnerships entail different power dynamics that can that can dramatically alter the way those that relationship works. And that's something it's, it's a much more nuanced um, approach to looking at what a partnership is, but it's something that you certainly have to think about. Even at, you know, even if you're talking about two lawyers figuring, you know, just joining forces, well, there's going to be power dynamics there that, that can influence the, the outcome of that partnership. For sure. Well, I think as far as partnerships is concerned, we've given you a little bit of our insight as to what we think builds a good partnership. I'm really thankful that this guy has always been my partner in business for the last over a decade. Um, we hope to see you on the next episode of Trials and Tribulations. Thank you for watching and listening. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining us. This episode was sponsored by Levelesque.